Hey, I need your help. About a month ago, I started making a game, and while the code part is really easy for me, I'm running into all kinds of questions and issues with my design decisions. So I'm hoping that you've got some ideas. Let me rewind a little bit, though, and tell you about the inspiration for this game. About a month ago, I was hosting Game Dev Guild, where I got to meet and talk to a whole bunch of game developers from all around the world. But we also got to introduce them to some really cool technology that I first saw at GDC, like this hologram table that lets you just drop down holograms on a map pretty much anywhere and surprisingly even ran on mobile devices. In fact, when my buddy Joe watched the talk, his first response was, can you play some sort of like Dungeons and Dragons game on here and battle each other? And my thought was, I don't know if you can, but I definitely want to make that. So after the conference, I took a quick nap and then woke up in the middle of the night and started a new Unity project. I didn't start with a big plan, I just knew that it was going to be desktop first, probably add mobile support, definitely add hologram support, and then I knew I wanted it to be a multiplayer game that supported 2, 4, or maybe even 16, or who knows, maybe up to 100 players. I wanted it to be more like a board game experience where players are talking to each other, planning things out, and maybe teaming up on the most powerful opponent. Which, of course, requires some way to communicate, so I'm thinking voice and text chat. Some people like to talk, and some people just like to type. I haven't set up the voice chat yet, but I'm thinking I'll probably use the one that Unity bought, the Vivox or Vivox, however you pronounce it. And for the text chat, I decided to go with this video sponsor, which is Stream, because they provide a really awesome, powerful, easy to use chat service. It only took me about an hour to integrate into my game, and it just worked. And it had all of the advanced features that I wouldn't even think to add if I was building my own chat system. And I've built my own chat systems. I don't want to do that again. I just wanted to make a game. They also have a free plan available for all of my viewers. If you're interested, check it out down below. If you're building a game that has chat, I definitely recommend you do that instead of building your own system. Let's go back to the new project. I started off by pulling in some art assets that I got from the Game Dev Guild bundle. I wanted to try them out. They looked really cool, and they gave me some inspiration and felt Dungeons & Dragon-y. I started by generating some tiles in a grid, then adding some AI that just kind of roamed towards the nearest enemy and attacked until they were dead. It was kind of working, but I was running into issues and kind of cheating the system just using a nav mesh agent instead of moving the characters along the actual tiles. So I decided it was time to do a little bit of research and figure out how to make a working tile system. So I did what all good game developers do when you run into a problem and jumped over to Google typed in my search, and found this awesome cat-like coding tutorial that really dives deep into how to build an entire hex map system. He shows you how to generate the grids, how to add rivers and roads and cities and all kinds of other features to your environment, how to even wrap the world or add a fog of war. It's way more advanced than what I needed, but it was a really good starting point and it gave me a good understanding of how the hex maps actually work and how the math works. Once I got the map generating and the characters navigating with my custom system, I started to notice some pathing issues that would disappear and reappear, or I would fix them and then they would come back the next day. So I decided it was time to add some unit tests until I got that entire pathing system figured out. I wrote about a dozen or so tests to try out all of the different scenarios, make sure that I got them solid and stable, and then, well, kind of abandoned them and moved on to multiplayer development. Now, when it comes to multiplayer development, I usually follow a simple philosophy. I like to start with local bots already fighting, and that's kind of where I was. I had bots that would battle each other, and I had it set up so that I could put in any number of bots and have them each fight. Then I'll go on to local multiplayer, make it so that that control of those bots or the control of those players is separated out. And I'll often do that by having something like a player script and maybe a bot controller and a human controller that will separately control that player and give it the actions. Once I've got that working and local multiplayer is good, that's when I like to start adding the online multiplayer or networked multiplayer. I usually do a lot of local testing first before I even worry about connecting remotely. I want to make sure that all of my systems work to be able to send commands remotely to my characters and then have them all act the same on multiple systems. I usually use a tool like this ng sync folders to make sure that I can test everything and do my development really quickly without having to do any builds. 
Before I tell you what I used, I got a quick question. What do you think I used? Drop a comment down below and let me know what it is that you would guess that I used or what you think I should have used. I'm really curious what people are gonna guess and it really does help with the YouTube algorithm and engagement. If you don't have a comment, then hey, please just hit the thumbs up button. All right, here it is. So I decided to go with netcode for game objects and I wanna explain exactly why because I had some pretty good reasons. The first reason may not be my best, but it's that I want to get good experience with Unity's new official networking system. They just released it. It's out there, and I believe it's going to be the long-term supported thing. So I want to get really familiar with it. And so far, my experience with it has been completely pleasant. I've had no problems. Everything just kind of worked and was a lot easier to do than I had expected. Things seem to tie in really well with all of the new services that Unity has released. And it's completely free up until the point that I'm going to hit production level. So I don't need to worry about paying for it or having to worry about some extra cost eating away while I'm trying to do my development. Once I got multiplayer working, I decided it was time to pull in some more characters, add in a whole bunch of new art, and start trying out different abilities and different ways for my players to battle each other. Once I had that battling kind of working, I decided it was time to start seeing what was going on in some logs. I wanted to have like a, a chat window where my players could talk to each other, taunt each other, and also see a message when one of their enemies gets defeated or one of their units gets knocked out. Now I've built a few of these chat systems for games in the past and I've worked on some really big games that had large scale chat that was not just across the entire game but even across all of the games in the company. And I know exactly what a trap this is. It seems like something super simple that then slowly turns into an all encompassing nightmare and a giant task. And again, I wanted to build a game, not a chat service. I don't want to have to deal with things like logging in on different devices, keeping chat history, sending direct messages, or worse, dealing with spammers that just instantly ruin your game. So instead of trying to build a service from scratch again, I decided to go with this video sponsor, Stream, who has an amazing chat service that has all of the features that I want and just works so that I can focus on building my game. Just like netcode for game objects, integrating streams chat into my game only took about an hour. I already had my free account, and you can get your free account just by clicking the link down in the description below. So I went to the dashboard and created a new application, downloaded the SDK, and dug through the examples one more time to get a good idea of where to start. With a few lines of code, I was able to implement global game chat and have history when I logged back in, see messages from multiple anonymously authenticated players, and actually have a little conversation with myself between two characters. Now I'm going to pause for a second because I mentioned at the beginning that I needed some help and I've got a couple of questions. A couple about design. I'm going to dive into those in just a minute once I show you a little bit more of what I've got so far and what the abilities and things look like. But I'm also really curious what you guys would recommend for authentication and user management systems. I'm kind of leaning towards Unity services because they're new and kind of interesting to me. I want to see how they work and whether I would recommend them to people. Kind of get some experience in there with them and really just kind of kick the tires, I guess. But I'm curious if you guys have some other recommendations, something that you think is really good or something that you'd really like to see how the integration works with. So how we would do authentication for gameplay, login, keeping track of inventory, keeping track of who the user is that's chatting and all of that stuff. So if you have an idea, a thought on it, please just drop a comment and let me know. And again, if you don't, just hit the thumbs up button and let's get deeper into the design stuff. Once the core of the game was working, I had the networking going, I'd gotten the chat implemented, bots were able to fight and you were able to battle each other one on one, I decided it was time to up the ante and go to four players. No reason to stick with just two, I want to go up to some crazy number possibly, so it's time to get in there early. I did that by just cloning my player one and player two into a player three and player four, and it just kind of magically worked. Once this happened though, I realized that my players needed to be able to chat independently, so it's time to quickly dive back into the chat system and add some direct messaging. 
Just like everything else with Stream, this was extremely easy, just adding a new channel with the messaging type. The hardest part for me was figuring out what I wanted to look like. And if you have some thoughts on what it should look like, drop a comment. I was considering maybe tabs, maybe some other system, but I'm really bad at the visual design of this stuff. So if you've got thoughts, please drop a comment. Let me know what game you think has a good UI for direct messaging. And then I'll use the ones down below as inspiration and try to make something that's maybe not terrible. I guess we'll see. Once I got four player mode working, it was time to start thinking really deep about the design and how I want this game to actually play out. My thought is that each player is going to pick two or three characters, maybe from some big pool of characters, maybe from some amount of money that they're spending, place them on the board and then roam around, find treasures, find power ups and battle each other. Maybe battle some like jungle mobs, like thinking League of Legends style, some just random stuff that's roaming around that you can kill and level up and power up your characters for. I've added some power-ups and health potions already, and even experimenting a little bit with treasure chests that let you spawn new units at runtime. I don't know if I want to go with a big map or a really small map, something that you can kind of roam around, or maybe something that's just a really tight battlefield. And I don't really know how I want to differentiate the characters yet. I've been playing around with a couple of things like you can see here. The Minotaur character will do an AoE slash and I'm thinking maybe he'll charge forward as his only way to move instead of being able to turn. And I put up a poll for the Treant to see what kind of abilities and ideas people had for him. And there were a lot of really interesting ones like toggling into a state where he's rooted down and buffing people. Or maybe just slowing down and buffing the people around him doing attacks that only go straight. There's lots of different ideas out there. And now is really where I'm trying to gather up as many of them as possible. So if you've got some cool unit ideas, some ability ideas for some of the characters you see here, or some characters that you think I should grab and pull in there. If there's an asset store link, just drop it down in the comments and I'll go check it out. But if you've got something that you think should be in here, please drop a comment. I'm going to read through all of them, try to reply to all of them as well, and try to add in as many of the really cool things that fit. And I think that your guys' inspiration, I mean, the combined knowledge of tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people, going to come up with a lot more cool game ideas than just me sitting here on my own. So I'm really hopeful that you guys can help me with that. And I'm really excited to see what ends up down below. Speaking of down below, while you're there, I'm also going to give you a link so that you can actually download, play, and try out the game. See what it's like, log in, and start chatting with me through my current chat setup. And I'll also have the link so that you can download and get your free Maker account from Stream. You get free access to use their service, including all of the cool moderation features and the reactions that I haven't shown you yet, but you'll be able to preview once you download and try out the game and all of the other cool features that are just built in completely free and avoid having to build that all yourself. Again, I've done that before. Don't want to do it again. Using a good pre-built solution saves me so much time. Just like networking, I don't want to build that from scratch either. I want to use the services, use the things that make it easy for me to make my game and make my game fun. So let me know what you think. Let me know what would make the game better. And if you check out the sponsor, drop a comment down below and let me know about that too. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.